Well, hi guys, these are gametes. They each bring over half of your parents' DNA to make you. Okay, to first understand leopard gecko genetics, let's talk about something we are familiar with, our characteristics. So here I have a picture of a guy and the way he looks. He has glasses, he has brown hair, he has Caucasian skin. How did he look like this instead of like this? Well, I'd like to say it's a simple answer, but it's not as easy as that. But in this video, I will give you a much better understanding of how genetics works and how we can apply that into the reptile hobby. First, let's go over some vocabulary that we are going to need to understand leopard gecko genetics. And this vocabulary relates to pretty much all living beings. So if you can understand this, you can definitely understand leopard gecko genetics. All right, so I got my little yellow pointer here. Let's do a little test, bounce it around, see if you can follow it around. Okay, enough playing around. So DNA is your genetic code. What makes you, you. A gene is a characteristic located in your code of DNA. So here we have your DNA strand. This curvy spirally thing is DNA, and it contains the coding that makes you look like you. Each one of these ladder-like strands that you see right here are called locus points. At each one of those locus points contains different genes that all combine in the end to make you look like you. Variations of those genes do exist. For example, if hair color is located here, not everybody has the same color hair, right? My hair is black, your hair could be blonde, brown, green. That's not natural, that would be a mutation, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, so there's many different types of hair color out there. Those different types are called alleles. Alleles are variations of genes. So simple, we covered two different topics right now. Genes are characteristics that define what you look like and alleles are variations of those characteristics. So based off of our opening clip, a gamete, right? A gamete is a sperm cell or an egg cell. A gamete contains half of your dad's DNA and half of your mom's DNA. So half of the genetic coding of what makes your dad who he is and half of what makes your mom who she is is contained in their sperm or in their eggs. Obviously males have sperm, females have eggs. So your parents split off half of their DNA into each one of those sperm and each one of those eggs. So what's gonna happen next? Well, I'm sure you can guess. The sperm and the egg meet together and they create your unique DNA. Each one of these little locus points, like let's say the locus point for hair, the locus point for eye color, the locus point for skin color, each one of these strands or locations, they equally meet with your mom's or dad's equal position on their half of the genetic strand that they gave you. So this red genetic strand came from your mom. This blue genetic strand came from your dad. Do you see how each one of these ladder steps, so to speak, meet at the exact location of the opposite gender's DNA? So the same locus point where your dad's hair color is located is the same locus point where your mom's hair color is located. And when the sperm and the egg meet, that DNA is fused together at that exact locus point to create your unique expression of hair color or eye color or skin color. That connection, that fusing of the genes actually has a name. It is called chiasma. Chiasma are the connected strands, the fused strands of DNA between your dad and your mom. It's these ladder rungs right here. So we have natural 
genes and natural variations. For example, black hair is a natural gene and brown hair is a variation. But green hair is not a variation. If anybody was born with naturally green hair, not dyed, that would be considered a mutation. Mutations occur for a couple different reasons. It could be something inherited genetically from your parents, or it could be something adapted to over time based on the environment that you grew up in. Mutations are permanently altered characteristics. There was actually a really good show on Netflix about the Anol, and they took a deserted, small deserted island where no reptile species existed. They took an anole and they put it on that island. Just a regular anole and put it on that island. They studied it over the next 10 years and guess what happened? Mutations occurred in the genes of that animal to adapt to its current surrounding. Some of them grew longer legs, some of them adapted to different colors, some of them's jaw and uh, snout shape changed. So it is possible for your characteristics to mutate over time depending on your environmental circumstances. Okay guys, so I know what you're thinking right off the bat. What is going on here? But to understand genetics, we are going to need letters and we are going to need a few definitions. Okay, let's first look at a couple quick definitions of genetics. And again, these are going to relate directly to leopard geckos. So it's important that you understand this concept. So one quick way that we're going to have to illustrate genetics is called a Punnett square. This Punnett square will show the combination of your dad's genes and your mom's genes into what made your DNA. So here's this blue strand is your dad's genes. This red strand is your mom's genes. Each one of these locus points contains different characteristics. And the way that you tell what your characteristics are going to look like is by making a Punnett square to show your dad combined with your mom. And what gets formed in this square is going to be your specific genetic makeup couple vocabulary terms we're going to need to know for this. Genes are represented by letters. For example, the brown eye gene is represented by capital B, capital B. The blue eye gene in humans is represented by lowercase e, lowercase e. So for the sake of this video, let's talk about two types of genes heterozygous genes and homozygous genes. Heterozygous genes means that you only have one copy of that trait in your DNA. Homozygous genes means that you have two copies of that trait in your DNA. Both heterozygous and homozygous come in four different variations or four different expressions. Each one of those genes can be dominant, they can be recessive, they could be incomplete dominant, or they could be co-dominant. So there's four different expressions that a heterozygous gene can take on, or four different expressions that a homozygous gene can take on. So let's cover the first one. For a gene to be dominant, it only needs one copy of that gene to show its characteristic traits. Brown hair is an example of a dominant gene. You only need one copy of the brown hair gene to show that you have brown hair. What if you have one copy of the brown hair gene from your dad and one copy of the blonde hair gene from your mom you are going to have brown hair because brown is dominant. So if a gene is not dominant, but it's in your DNA, what is the name for that? That gene is called recessive. 
So if you are carrying one brown hair gene from your dad and one blonde hair gene from your mom, the brown hair gene is going to show because it's dominant over the blonde hair gene. But that doesn't mean you don't have a blonde hair gene. It just means that that blonde hair gene is asleep in your DNA. It's not doing anything until maybe one day it breaks off and becomes its own gametes whenever you find a life partner and your life partner has a blonde gamete and those two gametes meet and now there's two copies of the blonde gene, now you will have blonde hair. Those genes that require two copies to show a different physical characteristic, those are called recessive expression genes. So we've covered two types so far. Dominant only needs one copy of the gene to show its dominance and recessive winds up needing two copies of the gene to show its display or characteristic trait. We have two other expressions that genes can take on that will apply to leopard geckos as well. So here we have a really quick example of incomplete dominance versus co-dominance. So you have two flowers here. Each one of these flowers is going to pass on half of their genetic code to the little baby flowers that are sitting at the bottom here. What if this red flower and this white flower passed on incomplete dominant genes to their baby little flowers? What you would get is a blending of the two colors. Incomplete dominance means that the gene you got from your dad and the gene you got from your mom, neither one of those is dominant over the other. Neither one of those is willing to sit under the other, neither one is willing to jump over the other, but rather they blend together and equally express those two different colors. So what do you get when you mix red equally with white? You get pink. So just remember, incomplete dominance means that neither gene is dominating and it's blending the two gene traits together to create its own unique pattern and style. What happens if the traits that the parent flowers pass on are co-dominant? Co-dominant is very different. It's the exact opposite, actually. It means that both the genes from your dad and the genes from your mom are both dominant and neither one of them is willing to submit to each other. So what that means is the characteristics equally get displayed across the offspring. So what happens when you have a co-dominant red flower mixed with a co-dominant white flower? You get expressions of both. Do you see this flower here? It has expressions of full red and expressions of full white it's because that flower has co-dominant genes inside of it. Neither gene was willing to dominate the other, neither gene was willing to blend with each other. Both genes had to equally share the spotlight. Well, hi guys. Well, hi guys, these are gametes. Forgot my line. Um, well, hi guys, these are gametes. They each bring over half of your parents' DNA to make you, to make you, to make you. Well, it's a pretty simple answer, actually. <laughs> so here we have your DNA strand. This curvy, spirally thing, that is you. <laughs> that curvy spy spirally thing. So this gentleman right here has brown hair. Because brown is a heterozygous dominant gene. Hold on. 